Hey guys, it's Ray. What's up? How you doing? Now, if you haven't been on art YouTube in a while, this is probably one of the coolest trends that's going around right now. It was started by one of my good friends here on art YouTube, ADC Art Attack. He actually has a whole series on this. I will very much link him down below. The basis of the trend is a highly skilled artist gets a hold of a children's coloring book and with all of their talent transforms that simple line work into an absolute masterpiece. And so that's exactly what I am going to do today. I ordered a book off Amazon. I'm gonna try to the best of my ability to turn it into an absolute work of art. Before we get into the thick of it, if you could please do the three holy grails of YouTube to appease our overlords, that would be awesome. <laughs> and let's begin. I realize this is very much not in season right now. I mean, not even close, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is that it's made for kids. If you look closely, all the drawings look very, very simple. Very simple line work, nothing too crazy to it. And with all of this extra space, all of these really simplistic lines, from an artist's perspective, it's basically free real estate. So let's check out our options. Before we get into it, I have this very strong urge to... Because I'm so indecisive, there's a huge probability that I'm going to find more than one page that I like. So as I find one that I like, I'm going to rip it out. Um, no, no, yes. Yes. This one is really cute, but the problem is, is that I don't know what a ghost looks like. So I have nothing to reference. Unfortunately, next page. Ooh, this one would be awesome. I like this one. No, no. I like this one, but to make it super realistic, that would be so much work. <laughs> so we're gonna skip it. Not a fan of the proportions. Not a fan of the nose. If I had a lot more time, maybe this one. Um, maybe. No. Oh, that's terrifying. That is like so unnecessarily scary. My God. Nah, I, wow, we're already at the end. Okay. I honestly thought I was gonna have like way more options, but no, surprisingly, it's a tie between these two right here. On one hand, we can do like a badass skeleton with like a spooky background, maybe add in some fog or something like that. And on the other hand, we have this owl where basically I would test my realism skills and completely change the proportions on this animal while keeping a simple background. So as far as which one I think will be a better makeover, I'm just gonna have to go with my gut and say this one. All right, so the second step into making this a masterpiece. The second step is that I need to transfer this image onto art paper because quite frankly, I'm actually very disappointed with how flimsy this paper is. There's two reasons why I have to transfer this to art paper. The first one is the obvious that it's super flimsy. And the second that I put watercolor, paint, colored pencil, whatever I choose to draw with, it's just gonna rip right through it. It's gonna bleed. It might rip very easily. And in the scenario, if that does happen, this leads me to the second reason why it's a problem. And that's if I mess up on the drawing, there's no comebacks. This one sheet of paper is the only one that I have. And if I mess that up, TS, you know?
boom, here they are side by side. And if you take a closer look, I made this one much lighter than the original, like I lightened it up on the computer. And the reason I did that is whenever I'm adding in the color, I won't have these heavy harsh lines peeking through the color and therefore ruining my makeover process. You know what I'm saying? And for the paper, it's not technically art paper, it's actually 80 pound cardstock, which is a really thick paper. I think this will be an absolutely perfect canvas. And if it does mess up, I can just print out another one. Now for the drawing process, I thought long and hard about what medium should I use. I thought about using acrylic paint, but I think this is way too floppy. I need something sturdy for acrylic. And I even thought about watercolor, but there's a thousand percent chance that the watercolor will just bleed right through it. So instead of making my life hard, I'm just gonna make it easy. So I've ultimately decided to use colored pencils. Okay, I know I'm like 45 seconds in, but I'm gonna have to reprint it much lighter because the color pencil, you can see right through it. I'm saying let's go. You're saying maybe. Let's find a disco. You're stuck at home being so lazy. Hey. For the t-shirt, this area right here, I feel like it's very wah. So I'm gonna redo it, add in some flow, make it like a nice little button up, and we'll see how it looks in comparison from there. Jacket went well. Now I'm gonna move on to the hands. And I gotta say that I'm actually feeling the vibe of the hands. It's a little bit Freddy Krueger. It's a little bit Lady Gaga, born this way, little monster era. So for the hands, I'm gonna try to match that energy, but I'm gonna make it a little bit more spookier and try to make it look a little bit more menacing and realistic. So I just finished up the hands and then just decided it's ugly now. But anyway, too late now to go back. Happy mistakes. Now this leads me to what I think is going to be by far the biggest part of this whole entire project. And that's the background. Basically, <coughs> sorry. The background is by far going to be like the most intense part of this whole entire process because there's just so much free space. We're talking about a full three fourths of the paper, you know? And as far as like what I'm gonna do and what my plan is, I have no idea. So I'm gonna have to brainstorm ideas in my head, get the vision of what I can see for the future of this drawing. So I just finished up with the uh, concepts for the background and I apologize for what you're about to see because they are absolutely utter chaos. <laughs> there are three different ideas that I am going off and they're all generally kind of the same, just a little bit different. First of all, I'm gonna get rid of that sun and turn it into a moon because it just makes more sense logistically. Once I'm done converting the sun into a moon, I'm then gonna move on to these bushes. I like the idea of the bushes. I like how they fill in space and add a little bit of foliage. So I'm gonna keep the foliage there, but instead of bushes, I'm gonna make really long, creepy, menacing looking trees. And then instead of just having a plain ground like this, I'm gonna turn it into a graveyard. As you can see by this wonderful, hyper-realistic drawing of a tombstone. And for the color palette, I decided to go with these colors right here. A lot of work ahead of me, let's do this thing.
Okay, so that was incredibly stressful. <laughs> the whole entire time I kept thinking to myself, I've gotten this far. What if I draw something and I'm like, wait, wait, I'm almost done with the drawing and it comes out bad and then I have to start the whole thing over again. It was incredibly stressful. But alas, it came out so nice. And now that I've pretty much got the whole entire drawing done, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to bring out the guillotine. I love this thing so much. It makes me feel like a third grade teacher. And here's the final results from this to this. Hey, 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 my dog is drinking the toilet water again. Oh, I can do that scene from um, Princess Diaries where they're like, she's the princess of Genovia. Anyway, I am very happy with the results. I think it came out pretty good. You know, I think I did a pretty decent job. As always, thank you so much again for watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. Usually around summertime, um, my channel slows down a lot and I don't really get promoted as usual. So I just wanna say that it truly means a lot that you're here watching, even in my slow times, you know? So um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that. And I will see you guys next video. Bye.